One of the first things you will, would like to accomplish with your practice chanter is creating a good sound and closing all the holes off with proper fingering across the chanter. Low G is the sound we're looking for. It is one of the more difficult things to do when you first start and it can be very frustrating. So it takes a few, uh, it takes some practice and takes, you know, a few reps at it to uh, create the proper sound. Low G on the practice chanter is, uh, sounds like this. Many people take the practice chanter and watch their fingers go down the holes one by one to create that low G sound. If one of the fingers is out of place, you will get uh, a, a, a sound that's not the low G and will actually show you what note you're um, off on uh, and to which finger is, uh, is out of place. Again, looking for that low, low G sound. Many times, just to take your hands off the chanter and then to reposition and create the low G, doing this repeti uh, repetitively will get you in practice and teach your fingers where the holes are and how to grasp the chanter properly. Proper hand position on your practice chanter will help you create the proper sound when having the holes totally covered. The hands lie flat across the chanter, not on an angle or rounded as it would be for a clarinet or piccolo. But we're playing with the hands flat across the chanter and then we're also working the hands through the chanter on the, on the pads of the fingers and through the center of the, of the chanter and through your hands. So we're not playing fingertips, we're playing across as any good instructional book would point out through photos and uh, instruction. If you were to underblow your chanter, you will get a very raspy sound. A good firm breath brings out a true pitch. Overblowing a practice chanter reed is also possible and that will result in the cutoff or shut off of the chanter. This is showing that we are blowing too heavy, too much pressure for that particular type of chanter reed.